This presentation is brought to you by BenLowry.com. Kurt Flowers, how are you doing today? Everything is good. It's nice and early in the morning over here. Yep. I I, little Skype messages popping up. I'm like, who's that? Oh, it's Ben. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the time difference. <laughs> and you've got an actual live human in your apartment at the moment. Uh, yes, he's a um, he's a part of the immersion program where he's gonna he's living here for about three to six months and just getting everything. And I've been brain dumping on him quite a bit, and maybe uh -huh. one day I'll let we maybe we'll have an interview with him and let him talk about what he's learned thus far and Ooh. how he likes it. Okay, so that's one of your clients that you're helping. So that's that's cool. That's like because Gordon does immersion things like that, doesn't he as well? Three days long. Yeah, yeah. Mine is I live by myself. And I'm always out and about. It doesn't bother me. So cool, wicked. All right. Well, I'm quite excited about what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about trusts, right? Yes, the infamous trusts and yeah. all the information out there. Yeah. Now, this is a big topic, and it's it's a topic that a lot of people talk about, and I think there's a lot of misunderstanding surrounding it, and I certainly don't understand it as well as I'd like to. So, I, you know, what is it about trust? I hear people all the time saying, you know, it's all about trust. It's all about trust. It's, trust is what it's all about. So, what what's going on, Kurt? Well... <laughs> I think, I don't know if it's a lot of misinformation or just the misguided information. Because you have a lot of people that say, it's all trust, 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 trust. Uh, no one really knows about trust. They just know the basic elements of trust. And then they take that basic element and they keep shifting it all over the place and not understanding that it goes a lot deeper. So it's, it's kind of like when I first said, if somebody's telling you about sovereignty and making it sound real easy, there's something wrong. And that's the same thing with trust. They do have great power with a properly set up trust. You have the benefits and um, you have the benefits and privileges or privileges. You have the control of like a corporation. You have the advantage of a corporation minus all the laws and codes that follow it. So you can set up a separate entity, another to protect you, but you don't have the laws and statutes that have ah. to bind the com uh, corporation either. Oh right. So let me just clarify, make sure I understand. So. So a trust is like an entity, like similar to like a corporation is, but a corporation is incorporated under the laws and the codes and the statutes and all that, whereas a trust can be like a private entity that's not subject to all those codes. Is that right? Exactly. Right. Because remember, you have to have a business license to open up a business and you look at a definition of license and we go into all that. But with the trust, remember, the contract is the law. So what does the trust say? As long as that contract doesn't violate any, you know, murdering people and killing and things like that, or obvious like theft or drug trafficking, but actually you could get away with that, but depends on how you do it. We're not going to get into that. Yeah. Erase that idea from your mind. <laughs> Erase that idea from your mind. So um, it gets into it. You can do a lot of things as long as it's not blatantly violating laws. Then you're fine. The trust is valid. Otherwise, it's not valid. So, right, I got it. Yeah, that makes sense. So, yeah, so very similar to a corporation. Very but, similar. But private. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so now why... I'm not quite sure what to ask. So why is this relevant to us? Why do we need to concern ourselves with trust? I mean, why is this... How, how are we going to use this concept? I don't understand. Well, with trust, it's, it's, trust is a contract. All... All trust or contracts, but not all contracts are necessarily trust. Right. It's kind of like this triangle square um, postulate or theory. I forgot which one it is, but square is a rectangle, but a rectangle is not necessarily a square. A rectangle is a square, but a square is not necessarily a rectangle. So with the trust, if I, let's say I have my, my handy dandy pick, mm. right? And I give it to you, even though I don't know what you would use for it. <laughs> I still own it. So it, what happens if we have divided title? So I still own the pick, but it's in your possession now. So you've given so it to me. It's in your, hmm? You've given it to me. Yes, I've given it to you, but it's still mine. So I have, I have legal title to it, and you have equitable title to it. So you have use and possession of it, while I, on other hands, can still tell you what to do with it and what not to do with it. So using my pick comes with rules. Right. I want to make sure when you give it back to me, there's no hairs in it. It's clean the way you gave it to me. <laughs> His teeth aren't all bent in all odd directions. And you got to um, cook me dinner every night. <laughs> right. <you're> magical pig. <laughs> and those are the rules. If you want it, those are the conditions that come with it. And that's what happens with a trust. If you accept the benefit, 
what are the rules that come along with that benefit? Ah, yeah, I see. So hang on, let, let me use the analogy of like, if my dad loaned me the use of his car, uh, that's something. Like, best analogy, yeah. Yeah, right. So ha hang on, are you saying as a beneficiary, I might get the beneficial use of something, but there might also be duties and obligations that I've got to adhere to, like rules. So, exactly. Right, okay. So just think about it like we do anything in life. I let you borrow my laptop, then there's going to be some rules that come along with that you got to follow. Don't put any porn on it. Don't visit any <laughs> porn websites if you get all these Trojans and all this spyware on my computer. You know, don't play within the rain and all, the, all these other rules. And because I'm letting you borrow my laptop, you got to let me borrow your Xbox or something until that's all over. Yeah, but and so now, hmm? hang on a second. I'm a little confused there because if you gave me your laptop and loaned it to me, Am I then the trustee that's got a duty to look after it, or am I the beneficiary that's, that's enjoying a benefit? I, I'm not quite sure which. And see, now this is, this is, I think this is where people get confused, mm -hmm. because there are many, many trust types, and we'll cover all, like, there's a, a slew of trust types, and each trust comes with its own set of rules. That's why it's been defined as that trust. So you have like a resulting trust. It's a big one. People need to understand what a resulting trust is. You have a, uh, um, uh, what is the name of this trust? You have irrevocable trust, irrevocable common law trust, re um, revocable trust, statutory trust, educational trust, and the list goes on and on and on. And each one has its own elements that make it that. So if we're talking about, well, the, I'm the grantor. Well, if we go back to the um, laptop. I give you the laptop. I'm the grantor now because I've given you the laptop. And then you're supposed to take care of it. But who then who's the trustee at that point? Because you're, you're getting the benefits of the laptop. So who turns into the trustee? Because someone is to take care of these assets. So even though it's only two of us, one party is playing two roles. So we just have to understand what who is playing what role. And this is the problem. This is the problem I see that people keep talking about trust, trust, trust. And no one's explaining what kind of trust is at first. Until we know what type of trust it is, we can't define what's going on. Mm. You know, there's one example I heard, which was like with the babysitter and the kid. Now, that's a good example, just in case people haven't heard that. It's like the parents trust the babysitter with certain duties to look after the kid. And so the kid's the beneficiary, the babysitter's the trustee, and the parents are the trustors or grantors yeah, trust right? or grantor settler yeah so uh, that, I, that, that would be the best that's a really good analogy because yeah. like i said the, the the base word of what well, is the only word trust means that you have trust yeah this is why in a trust the grantor or the settler they give up the the res which is the item they right. give up control and that giving up control is what what really sets them free they right. have someone else take care of it. And this is why in a trust, if it's set, when it's set up properly, if the grantor gives up control, they're not taxed the same way. Control equals tax. So think of it like that. When you have right. control, you're going to get taxed on it. I see. So that's why it's important to set up an irrevocable trust, is it? To relinquish that. control, and then you've got a good excuse of why you're not going to pay tax on the... Cause, because it's actually technically it's not in your control. Not in your control. It's in the trustee's control. Yeah. And you give up ownership. You give up all of it as a. And so that's why when people start talking trust, what kind of trust are we talking about first? Okay. And that will start to clear up a lot of the the misinformation because you have the basic trust with the little triangle you see people draw. You know, yeah. grantor, trustee, beneficiary. But what, that's just the basic elements of all trust or most trusts, because some trusts cannot have a trustee, and there are situations why there's no trustee involved, and then you get court appointed things going on, and you have all these things that are involved with it. But if we don't define what kind of trust we're talking about, then I can make it up. You know, is it an irrevocable trust? Is it a statutory trust? Oh, this guy's the trustee, and that guy's that. And do you get what kind of like the beneficiary assigns the trust? No, <laughs> beneficiary don't assign nobody. <laughs> But it all depends what kind of trust it is, and it depends what the indenture says. What is the agreement? Right. So if the indenture says if the beneficiary is unhappy, then he can assign a trustee, then that ah. can happen. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, right. Oh, I see. But in most cases, we have to define, in most cases, that, that's not what it is. The beneficiary just accepts benefits, and he has to follow the rules to accept those benefits. Right. That's it. Right, in right, most right. Cases. I see. 
Uh, can I ask you a question? I've heard a lot of people saying, I'm the grantor beneficiary. I'm both. I'm the grantor and the beneficiary. Now, what does that really mean? Well, in a, if you're in a resulting trust, or don't quote me, because we have to get into the types of trust. If you're in a resulting trust, you can do that. You come in as grantor, assign a trustee, and then move over to beneficiary. So it can be done. Like I said, it's real flexible, but you always have to define what kind of trust are we talking about. Right, and usually right. looking at the positions, you can tell what kind of trust you're in. I see. So it entirely depends on what the contract is, what the indenture is. It, there exactly. Could, there could be a whole range of different rights and duties, depending on what the deal was. Yeah, because, you no, know, just like any contract, a contract is expressed or implied, a trust is expressed or implied. Oh, I see. So, we can have, so when I let you borrow the car, that's an implied trust. It's not expressed where it's written down on paper somewhere. We have all these rules and everything we have to look at. Yeah. So the one is expressed and one, a lot of them are expressed. When you, you know, really, if you start to put your mind in trust mode and put on your trust goggles and you'll see everything as a trust. When I go, when I do this, when I let my friend borrow that, if someone, whatever contract we're setting up, a lot of it you can see as a trust. Right. But then what kind of trust is the question? Right. Okay. Well, that makes sense so far. So, okay. So, I've, like, okay. So, uh, I've heard people talk about court and the fact that when you go into court, there's a trust and they want you to be the trustee and all that. What, what does that mean? Well, court, until you understand really the history of court, it's really, a lot of it is speculating to me, from my personal opinion, from what I understand about trust. And I think there is a, tru there is a trust going on, hmm. but you just got to ask that, what kind of trust? Right. And because of the Fifth Amendment and uh, um, going silent, that is meant for the government, not for us they don't have to say anything. And because they don't want to say anything because they're protecting the public, you can kind of go in there and start directing things and mandating, well, this is what it's going to be. That's what it's going to be. Hmm. Or you can just realize, you know, it's all about your strategy. And if you can get it to work, I say go for it. But there's definitely trust involved in it. And how, like, if you look at cars, like the big one is cars, people registering their cars. Well, you register your car. Well, what does register mean? To surrender. So you register your car to the state. So... You, at that point, with a grantor. Then you turn around and you're a beneficiary. Well, who's the trustee? The state. But you're in ownership, so you have to make sure you take care of it and the state just controls it. They just have legal title while you have equitable title. Oh, I see. So, so you get the possession and the use of it, but they're mm -hmm. technically the legal owners. They technically. can have title to it. They're, they're in control, but as the beneficiary, you've still got rules... That you have to adhere to right exactly so like those we call traffic laws yeah gotcha so i see i see yeah okay i'm starting to get my head around it a little bit so yeah i, I can see what you mean it, it's not enough to say there's a trust it, we we need to know what's the terms and conditions of the trust that's exactly. that's, that's the question like what's the rights and duties and obligations of the parties that's the real crux that's of it. the main question because as a trustee you it depending on the type of trust set up you don't have to tell the beneficiaries anything right they don't have to know anything about the books or records but certain types of trust they do the beneficiary has a right from the beginning to ask to see the indenture and to see what's going on within the trust Right. So other types of trust, they have absolutely no right unless the trustee wants to tell them. I see. That's where we get into irrevocable and revocable and the different types of trust, which that's already a, a factor in. Okay. So could you introduce us to this idea of revocable and irrevocable? What does that mean? Well, you have um, a revocable trust is where the grantor, um, he can revoke the trust at any time. Hmm. So at any time, he's like, oh, okay, well, yeah, you guys can have the car for now, and then he goes off and he's beneficiary or something. And at one point he says, you know what? You guys aren't doing what you're supposed to do, so I'm going to take the car back. Hmm. So technically, you always have ownership because hmm. you can always just reach back and grab the car. So a revocable trust, from at least from, also from a tax standpoint, you're going to get taxed on it because you – and mo the IRS tries to see every trust as a revocable trust or a grantor trust, as they call it. Hmm. Because the grantor still has control. Ah, oh, I see. So the government, the tax authorities, always wants to 
They want to bust the trust because they want as much tax as possible. So exactly. if, if they can try and show that your trust was revocable, then they can show that you owe tax. So so for the purposes of asset protection and stuff, is we want to be doing 